Manhunt. The clue of the magazine murder that led to Manhunt. No crime has been committed yet. No murder has been done yet. No manhunt has begun yet. I must have a sense of humor. I've got a nurse who'll make you well so you can marry some other girl. Oh, we've gone all over this before, Mary. Things just didn't work out between you and me, that's all. That's all. That's everything, George. Couldn't we? No, Mary, we couldn't. Now, please wheel me over to the window. I can put my typewriter on the sill and work there. All right. That what you want? Yeah, thanks, Mary. Final installment on my murder mystery is overdue at Popular Magazine. It's got to be done today. I had to get to it, that is. I was thinking the same thing. Mm hmm? What does that mean? Nothing. You, um, want me to read you the last lines of the installment that's been published? Yes, will you please? Why not? A huge hospital was silent, except for the ominous sound of the approaching footsteps. Was it the murderer coming back to make sure of his work? Or at once he knew who the killer was, knew that he himself was to be the next victim. He reached for the telephone and... It will continue next month. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. I'll take it from there. Give me the police hurry. This is an emergency. Hurry. The knob turns slowly, then... Fact and fiction have paired off in a deadly parallel. A writer of murder mysteries lies dead, shot by an unseen player. Who will take the role of the storybook detective? Who will start the manhunt? Manhunt and the clue of the magazine murder. Oh, father, a busy man, Pat. Better get this new thing up and pull it to work. If it does, all we have to do is pour some of it on. Hey, Stephen, if you don't forget you're a police laboratory expert, why I... It's true. Oh, nice busting in, Bill. Didn't you notice the sign on the door says private? Private, he says. I don't believe in signs on doors. Yes, I can believe that. The one on your door says detective. Hmm. Hey, Drew, what do you know about a guy named George Winston Kirk? A uh, writer, I think. You think? He's the best, hmm? Kirk's the fellow who's writing that sensational murder serial in Popular Magazine. What about him? He isn't writing it anymore. He's dead. What? He's sitting in front of the window in his hospital room. He's been sick. And he got an attack of lead poisoning from a bullet in his head. Anybody in the room? Yeah, his nurse. My next romance, by the way. And the gun. The nurse claims somebody outside the window fired the shot and threw the gun in the room. Ground for a room, huh? You gonna grab the nurse? Grab the nurse, he says. Sure, she did it. Why shouldn't I grab her? I want in on this case, Bill. I want in, he says. You get out. I'm going up to General Hospital and get that nurse. I'll bring the gun back to you for a fingerprint check. What am I supposed to do in the meantime? Uh, hold your secretary's hand. Hmm? The one she ought to be slugging you with. I promise him enough by just being around. I'm going with you, Bill. Do me a favor and try. I'm sick of having you under my feet when I'm on a murder case. Please try. So I'll have an excuse to conk you one. Physical superiority and mental deficiency are generally allied, Bill. Sure they are. And I'm plenty strong. Now stick here, here. Okay. But I hope Kirk wasn't killed in the mental delinquent ward at General Hospital. They'd never let you out. Come on. Come on, Bill. Well, it looks like something exciting around here, finally. What about me? I'd rather have a murder. Oh. Say, Pat... Are you reading the George Winston Kirk murder mystery in popular magazine? Sure, who isn't? Final installment is doing the next issue, isn't it? The murderer gets himself good and unmasked then. Uh huh. Yeah, I've got an idea. You're not calling me, Pat. Sure, sure. Hey. Yes, sir? Operator, will you get me the editor of Popular Magazine, please? Yes, sir. I'll hold it. Say, Pat, you remember that in the Kirk story, one of the murderer's victims didn't die? Oh, sure, I remember. He got a look at the murderer, but he couldn't be questioned. Um, I don't know, too shocked or something. Right. 
They took him to a hospital. And at the end of the installment in the current popular magazine, he was about to call the police. Hello? Hello, this is Drew Stevens' police laboratory. Who is this, please? My name's Cobb, George Cobb, editor of Popular Magazine. Oh, Mr. Cobb, I'm calling to find out how the George Winston Kirk story in your magazine turns out. I'd like to know myself. I've held up the magazine for a week until Kirk was well enough to write the final installment, but apparently he never got to it. Sorry, I can't help you. Okay, thanks just the same. It's all right. I'm going down to the hospital now to see if Kirk left any notes lying around. I'll let you know if I find anything. Thanks. Goodbye. You're all blind, too. Oh, it sounded that way, didn't it? Mm Mm-hmm. Listen, Pat. Get this coincidence. The guy in Kirk's story is killed in the hospital is about to name a murderer. Then the author is killed in the hospital as he's about to write the story. Hold on, Bill. How do you know the fellow in Kirk's story was going to be killed? The chapter ends with just the doorknob turn. Oh, what else could it be, Pat? The guy was about to phone the police when, bang, the murderer gets him. A little corny, but nice and dramatic. (laughs) All right, of course, as usual. Mm -hmm. Now, look, if there is some connection between the actual killing of Kirk and what happened in his story, we might have a lead. Well, we've got a lead, the nurse. Oh, I doubt very much that she's going to be. No, we've got one of our cute cases, Pat. No kidding. All right. Well, what do we do about it? Well, you check all the unsolved crimes in the police record. Mm-hmm. Go back 15 years if you have to. See if any actual series of murders was anything like the one Kirk described in his story. Maybe Kirk was too close to the truth. Okay, Drew, I'll do it. Where will I reach you? You come back here and I'll phone you. I'm going to the hospital to take care of Bill Morton's health. I just remembered that in Kirk's magazine story, one of the last people murdered was the detective sergeant investigating the case. I keep telling you there were no papers, Mr. Cobb. Go on back to your magazine. I'll call you if anything turns up. But Sergeant Morton, if there are notes, I can still hire another writer to complete Kirk's story. Don't you understand? We've got to go to press. I don't care where you got to go. As long as it's out of here. Take the back door. I got witnesses waiting out in the hall. Somebody must have seen that nurse with a gun. All right, but I'll be around the hospital here somewhere if you hear anything. All right, all right. Goodbye. Send the next one in. Okay. Hey, that's me, Bill. That's me, he says. Get out of here, Drew. I'm busy. Now listen, Bill. The quarters are pestering you, aren't they? Well, I just found something. Don't say anything about the nurse. Didn't this story, hmm? Huh? Say that I found George Winston Kirk's notes on the final chapter of his mystery, that I'm in the room in which he was murdered, and that I'll be there all night working on him. You got that? Yeah, I got it. Where are the notes? We'll have them in the morning. But see to it that the papers get that story right away. You want the newspapers to print the fact that you found those notes on Kirk's final installment? Yes, I sure do, Bill. Now, as soon as Pat arrives here, I'm taking a chance on catching the murderer on what might be called the installment plan. Hey, you ought to keep your jaw locked. Well, Pat, it should happen to me. Look, Drew, I love you, and sometimes I feel like killing you. This room isn't healthy. It's the room in which Kirk was killed. Here. There's about me wanted in your laboratory. The colonium compound. Mm-hmm. Good. Now, what did you find out in your check of the police file? You must be psychic or something. Ten years ago, there was a string of actual murders just like the ones Kirk was describing in the story. And the murderer escaped. Ah, oh, better and better. Now, Pat, take this gun in that chair and go sit behind the screen over there. Mm-hmm. I'm expecting a visitor. I want you to keep him covered when and if he comes. It may be ours. Can you take it? You know me. Yes, that's why I asked the question. All right, now get in here next screen. It may show any minute. But you and I and this bottle of brandy are going to have to smoke. Hello? Put your hands up, you. Easy with that gun, stranger. I'm a police officer. Never mind what you are. What are those papers in your hand? The notes on the final chapter in the Kirk murder mystery? Oh, yes, but we're standing pat on them. I said we're standing pat. Hand them over. Come on, now. All right, as long as you don't pat me over the head with that gun. I said as long... Give me those papers. That's better. Hmm. I was trouble for nothing. Nothing here. Now, you. You want to stay healthy, don't move for five minutes after I leave here. Understand? Pat. Hmm? Pat. (laughs) Wake up. The murderer of George Winston Kirk just paid us a visit while you were asleep. Oh, I couldn't help it, Drew. I was so tired. I just... I know, I know. You couldn't keep your eyes open. Well, keep them open now. Go out in the hall. All right. But who was the visitor you had? I don't know. He wore a 
on that. But I think we can find out. Come on. Now, turn out the car to light. But they're very good now. Why turn them on? You do it, Pat. This is my thing. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Hey, look at the floor. It's full of footprints glowing in the dark. Quiet. Hey, what's going on there? Come here, Bill. Quick. Yeah? Yeah, what is it? Listen, Bill. Same guy who murdered a dozen people ten years ago killed George Winston Kirk early today. Kirk had gone to the files, apparently for authentic police cases to write about, and he hit on one in which the murderer was never caught. What about it? You see, when he read Kirk's story, he believed that Kirk knew his identity. And maybe he did. What he wanted to do was prevent the last installment of the mystery story from being written. So when the papers announced that Drew had the notes, which he wrote himself, by the way, the murderer had to get them. So he paid us a visit. See these footprints showing the floor? They were made by my visitor. See, I had sprinkled chlorine compound on the floor. That's not the name for a lady in death that woman is paint from. And he stepped in it. And that trap on the trot. But we're following the footsteps now. I'm with you. They lead to a door down this floor. Right. Right. This door. Going back, back. Here we go. Here. Okay. Open. Okay, hold it. We got... Say, Blue, you're nuts about the whole thing. This isn't Kirk's murderer. It's his editor, George Cobb. Had Kirk's editor and his murderer, Bill, I bet on it. And the murderer of a lot of others, too. That's right, isn't it, Cobb? You'll never take me alive. I'll throw you down. Oh, nice slugging, Bill. Hey, look at the bottom of his shoes. He's lying there on the floor. That's how Drew tracked him down. Boy, only a genius like that Drew Stevens could fix it so that a murderer could be seen only when the lights are out. <laughs>